please welcome Kathy Wilma. Well, good morning, and I'm so glad you're here. And uh, you know, when I first got here the other evening, I ran into some ladies that I knew and some I didn't, and we sat down and, and had a bite to eat in the restaurant. And the lady said, what are you going to be speaking on? And I talked about what it was a little bit. And she said, but what can I do? And that's how I felt the first time I came 31 years ago. I thought, what can I do? And not only that, I was interested in just a small sliver of what I had faced in, in our home district. And I got down here, and I was really overwhelmed by all the information that was presented. And I'd like to ask you, how many of you are here for the first time? OK. Are you a little overwhelmed after all the? <laughs> and the first time I went home, I thought, I can't do this. And I imagine some of you are kind of feeling that way, too, and wondering, what could I do? And I hope by the time uh, Stephanie and I are done this morning that you'll have lots of ideas as to what you can do. In fact, don't even, don't even end those ideas. You can come up with new ones. But first of all, while you have your phone out, each state has a state board of education. So would you look up your state board of education <coughs> website? Now, I don't know what that's going to be under, but if you put your state and then just put State Board of Education, I'm sure it's going to pop up. Give you a few moments to do that. <laughs> okay, have you found it? Some boards are elected, some boards are appointed. How many of you have appointed boards? Okay, several of you. Nebraska is one where we are elected. Quite a difference there. Um, on the appointed board, often the people that get appointed are pretty, I guess I'd say, influential. You know, they've got a name out there in the political world. And, and when the governor changes, that often changes. It, it becomes quite political. But you can still be involved, and that's what we want to talk about now. On your board, if you'll look at your website, You'll probably see a link to the meetings. And once you find maybe a schedule of the meetings, if you click on a recent one, you should find an agenda. How are we doing? Are, are some of you having trouble accessing the internet? Yes. And okay. Do you know the link? Okay. Honors? Is that what you said? Yeah. Hilton Guest should help you. That may that may kind of affect you if you can't get on the internet. Or Hilton Meetings. Hilton H Meetings. Is capital M is capital. No space in between. Okay. Hilton Meetings. Capitalize the beginning of each word with no space in between. I'm glad you told us you were having trouble. Is that the Wi-Fi password, Julia? Yes. Yes, it is the Wi-Fi password. Julia, is your meeting with an S or without? Meetings. Meetings, plural. Thank you. No S. Okay, I guess you'll have to look it up later. We wanted you to really get involved so that when you went home, you actually knew how to do this too. But I'll just move along. On your agenda, it's always good to watch that agenda because it starts telling you what that board is up to or what they're going to be considering. And one thing that I have found is to pay particular attention to the consent agenda. That's usually at the end of uh, their agenda listing. And on the consent agenda, what that means is everything listed under that particular portion moves forward with one vote. And I have found that the things that probably are the nastiest are often hidden in the consent agenda. So you want to look at that. And if there are grants involved, 
they're maybe looking to approve a particular grant. It might be for health or who knows what. And we all know some of the code words. Those were often really good places to look into. Now, if you're not on the board, it's good if you see something on that board that you could, that's of concern, you could help visit with a board member because they can pull an item from consent agenda to an action agenda so that it's actually discussed and voted on separately, which may give you ammunition in the future as to whether you really need that board member in a elected <coughs> situation or not, or if it's an appointed situation, maybe you need to think of finding someone that would be willing to serve in that position, and also you can write recommendations for that individual, even in appointed situations. I had something occur last year. I don't know how it happened, but I got a phone call, and uh, it was an office in Lincoln, and they were asking me if I would like to serve on, and I have to look at it here, excuse me, can't see, on the uh, judicial uh, committee for the 11th district. Why, sure. I didn't know what it was, but yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I don't know who put my name out there, but uh, you know, you can even be in appointed positions from time to time. So don't don't think just because you're not someone really influential, maybe in your state, that that eliminates you. It doesn't. It has to do with the people you know and how much you're involved, and if you're willing to do something. Now, you may be fortunate enough to have a friendly board member a conservative board member. How many of you have, that you know of, a conservative board member on your state board of ed? Great. There are a few. Stephanie's another one. That's good to see. <laughs> well, you know, they could use your help. Often what happens when someone gets on a board or on a commission, their friends go, oh, great, we've got a conservative. And they kind of turn around and go home. And they leave that person out there all by themselves. Don't do that to them. <laughs> they have a very hard job to do. And they can use your help in so many ways. That might be, as you have attended a conference like this, you may have some of Donna's DVDs, or you've got some in newsletters and things from National Eagle Forum, that you can provide to those board members to help them. Because remember, most of the board is going to be given the message that the administration or the liberal progressive side wants them to have. And to go and do the research themselves is very time consuming. And if it's like our board ran in Nebraska, about four days before the board meeting, I'd get a stack of materials anywhere from here to here in the mail. And I was supposed to go read through those really quick, study them all, and be all prepared and ready to vote in three to four days. That's about impossible. But I had some very good friends who often would take part of those materials, highlight things that they thought was really important that I needed to know. Uh, if I would request grants, they might read the grant and help me out. And let me tell you what can be hidden in grants. The grant application or the RFP is a great place to look because it starts describing what that department is going to have to do to qualify for that grant. And that happened when we were discussing sex education in Nebraska some years ago. If you've been here a long time, you probably heard the story. But I was very curious because I saw CDC. Well, that was a flag. So I ask about the grant, so they get me a copy of the grant, and as I read through the grant, I find a curriculum is mentioned, can we talk? Sounds totally innocent. So I ask the department, do you have the can we talk curriculum here? Yes, we do. I would like the teacher's manual and the curriculum. So they give that to me, so I go home and I read. I paid attention to the teacher's manual, not particularly the student's book, because the teacher's manual, again, has the things that you're probably looking for. As I went through that one evening, I'm reading, and I said to my husband, oh my goodness, listen to this. And they were to distribute condoms in the room to the students, we're talking fourth grade, take the condom out of the package, pull it up their arm to see that it fits all sizes. And we were sitting there, and I just couldn't believe it. 
And I finally said to him, I said, you know what I really ought to do? I should go teach this lesson to the state board. He said, do it. Well, I couldn't do that. But I went to Lincoln, Nebraska, where we have our meetings. First time and only time I ever bought condoms. <laughs> went back to my car, and I mean, I just about got physically sick. I could hardly get back over there. I was so nervous and embarrassed, because what if somebody recognized me? <laughs> I, I was mortified. But I went to the meeting the next day. Now, here's something else you can do. In the audience, as usual, was Naomi Brummond, my, one of my cohorts in crime. And what was so great about her, she, first of all, she was a local board member. Second of all, she would sit right back there in the room. And you know what I knew? She was praying for me. You need a prayer warrior in the room because this is a satanic battle. It's for the souls of our children. And I thought, I can't do this. And, and that morning she said, yes, you can, Kathy. So <laughs> go to the meeting. Naomi's sitting back there in the audience. And I told him when we got to the action item, I have another subject I'd like to discuss. Went out front of the board and I said, I'm going to teach you a lesson from the Can We Talk curriculum. And so I began to pass out my goodies to the commissioner of ed, the attorney, each one of the board members. They would not pick them up off the desk. <laughs> when the meeting was over, they're laying there. So anyway, I started my lesson. The only thing I didn't do, since they didn't pick them up, I couldn't make them open them up. I did not actually physically pull it up my arm. But I, I got kind of nervous at that point, and I said, if I finished the lesson the way a teacher should in the classroom, this is what I would do. I could hardly make it back to my seat, and pretty soon one of my most progressive board members who had always been a little um, cutting to my positions, <laughs> she looked down there over her reading glasses and she said, Kathy, how could you do this to us? It is so embarrassing. I said, how do you think a fourth grader feels in the classroom? We won that vote. But sometimes I think that's another approach. They don't maybe even know what's in that curriculum. Nobody else on the board had read the grant. They didn't care because the commissioner of ed said this is a good thing and their role in their mind is to get through the things the commissioner of education wants. Same with superintendents on your local board. You have to remember, board members go to new board member training. And in that training, they're instructed that your job is to support this superintendent or this commissioner and help him get these things through. And somehow there's a disconnect over the fact then that really they have constituents that they're supposed to be representing. Children out there in their district, they should be looking out for. So, I think to take something like that and present it to them, it's so, it's in their face, but it's not in a mean way. It's in an educating way. And they didn't have the nerve then to go ahead and push that through. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to go ahead and, and try to finish up really quick. If you have an elected board or if you're going to try to nominate someone that your governor would consider, remember writing recommendations for that individual, helping other people know that individual. If it's a campaign situation, going out knocking on doors, uh, doing everything you can to help that person move forward, calling into radio stations. And that's another thing. Always think of educating. When these issues come up, you may not win them. But by getting on, on the radio, by being in editorials, uh, anything like that, speaking engagements, meet and greets, your goal is to educate. We had heard so many times over the last few days that these people don't even know what's going on in their school. That's your role. So there's so much you can do. And I hope you'll go home and do that.